This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey friends! If you're new here, welcome to my channel, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back! For today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make your very own mini bee! I get a lot of questions from people who are trying to learn how to crochet, and they ask me what is the easiest project to start with, and when I think about it, I think a bee is the best project to start with for complete beginners, just because it uses very basic stitches, there's a color change involved, so that gets you introduced to color changing, and the miniature bee works up pretty quick. I'm excited to say we will be using Hobie yarns for this tutorial. Thank you Hobie for sending me so much yarn. I am so obsessed with the baby snuggle yarn from Hobie so definitely go check it out if you are looking for a great chenille yarn. So without further ado let's get into the tutorial. So the stitches that we will be using during this tutorial are the following. A magic ring, increases, decreases, single crochet, and we will also be doing some color changing. Before we get started on the tutorial I just want to put out that I will go over how to do every single step of this pattern. However, I will not go into depth on how to do each stitch. If you're a complete beginner, I definitely recommend checking out some other YouTube tutorials that go over how to do a magic ring, how to do an increase, how to do a decrease. And then also, I will be going at a slower pace, but if it is still too fast for you, you can always adjust the speed of the video in your YouTube player down below. Lastly, this is my very own pattern that I designed, so please do not resell, redistribute, or copy this pattern in any way. You are totally welcome to sell the finished physical plushy, but please do not resell or copy the pattern. All right, so for supplies that you'll need for your mini B, we will be using a five millimeter hook or size H. You can also use a smaller hook or a bigger hook, just know it will impact the size of your final B. We'll then need some stitch markers. We'll need some scissors. We'll need some sewing needles. We'll need two 12 millimeter safety eyes. And then of course we'll need some stuffing slash polyfill. In terms of yarn, like I mentioned earlier, I am using Hobie's yarn and we will be using Baby Snuggle. I am using the color 33 for the stripes of my bee. And then I'll be using color 04 for the main body part of my bee. And then for my bee's wings, I will be using color 01. I know traditionally bees are black and white, but it's kind of hard to see those colors on the screen. So that's why I am going with these fun alternative colors. And then one skein of each color will be more than enough. We honestly will probably only be using like a half a skein. All right, we will be starting out the pattern by making the body of the bee. So go ahead and grab your main body color. But all right, for round one, we are going to be doing a magic ring and we're gonna be putting six single crochet into that magic ring. Three, four, I like to then go ahead and grab my stitch marker and put it into the last stitch just so we can keep track. And then go ahead and close that magic ring shut. And this is what the end of round one looks like. For round two, we will be doing six increases. So into every stitch, we will be placing an increase. So we will be repeating this six times. So increase, increase. Increase, increase. And this is the end of round two. For round three, we will be doing a single crochet followed by an increase. And we will be repeating that sequence six times total. So then single crochet increase, single crochet, increase. And this is the end of round three. For round four, we are going to be doing two single crochet followed by an increase and we will be repeating that sequence six times total.
So this is what the end of round four looks like. We are now done increasing and we will now be working on making the body longer. Before we continue with the tutorial, I just wanted to take a quick break from the video to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that allows you to engage with your audience, create beautiful professional websites, and sell anything online successfully. One of my goals for 2024 was to create my very own website, and I am personally using Squarespace. I love how they have thousands of professional, beautiful website templates for you to choose from, and no coding is required. I also love their website builder. They use a drag and drop system, so you can customize your website exactly how you want it with no code involved. Another great thing I love about Squarespace is that they allow you to have an online store. You can sell both digital and physical products, and that's perfect for us crocheters because you can sell both physical plushies and digital patterns. And lastly, if you sell in person at markets or pop-up events, you can get a square reader, and that will allow you to take in-person sales, and all of your inventory will automatically sync with your online shop. Head to squarespace.com for your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash crochet by Jenna to receive 10% off off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring another video of mine. And with that, let's get back into the tutorial. So for rounds five through seven, so the next three rounds, we are simply just going to be doing 24 single crochet around. So I'll do round five on camera with you. So one, So this is what the end of round five looks like. As you can see, the body is getting a bit longer. All right, round six is the same thing. Let's do 24 single crochet around. All right, this is the end of round six. And now for round seven, we will be doing one more round of 24 single crochet around, but we will be color changing for round eight. So do not complete the last stitch of round seven. So do 23 single crochet around, and then we will start color changing on the last stitch of round seven. So one, two, three. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. So I just did twenty three single crochet around for round seven. This is what it's looking like so far. So since we're color changing in round eight, we always want to prepare for the color change one stitch ahead of time. So right here where the stitch marker is, this is the last stitch of round seven. This is our twenty fourth single crochet. So to begin color changing, I go under this 24th stitch and I actually do the yarn under method, but feel free to yarn over if that's the method that you prefer. So I'm going to yarn under and then right here, we're going to pause because this is where we need to introduce the second color. So as you can see, we only did half of our single crochet. We didn't completely finish it. So go ahead and stop here. I am going to go ahead and leave a somewhat good tail and cut this yarn if my scissors will work there we go now go ahead and grab the stripe color that you want to use for your bee as i mentioned earlier i am not doing the typical colors just because black does not show up well on camera so i'm using this dark purple so go ahead and grab that second color so then go ahead and pick back up your bee and as we left it there are two loops on our hook so I'm gonna take the second color and I'm simply going to hook it around my crochet hook and then pull that second color through both of the loops on my hook. And there we go, we color changed. And as you can see, this will leave the 24th stitch in the main body color that we want, which is this lavender color. And it will prepare us for the first stitch of round eight to be in the dark purple color, which is the second color that we wanted to color change to. Now, before we go ahead and keep going, go ahead and take the two ends of both colors and just tie a knot so it is nice and secure and it won't come loose. So there we go, I just tied the knot. And then we just completed round seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my stitch marker 
on to that last stitch so we know that is the end of the round and this is what it looks like so far. All right, so for round eight and round nine, we will just be doing 24 single crochet around in this secondary color and kind of the same thing that we just did at the end of round nine, we will be color changing back to our main color. So I will walk you guys through it again. So first let's do round eight. So 24 single crochet around, one, two, Twenty three, twenty four. All right. So this is the end of round eight. And as you can see, we just made our first stripe of our B. It's looking super cute. Now for round nine, we will be doing 24 single crochet around. But remember, we're going to color change on round 10. So let's leave the last stitch of round nine untouched, just like how we did earlier. So one, two. Twenty three. All right, perfect. So I'm going to prepare to color change for round 10. So here is the last stitch of round nine. I'm going to go ahead and do a single crochet, but I'm going to stop right here when there's two loops on my hook and then I'm going to grab the main body color, hook it onto the end of my crochet hook and then pull it through both of the loops and complete that last single crochet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tie the ends to make sure the color change stays. And now usually when we keep color changing back and forth, sometimes people prefer not to cut the secondary color since we will be color changing back to it in a few more rounds. So it's just personal preference. I am going to leave it here and attached since I know we will be using it later. But if you don't like it in the way, feel free to just cut it and continue on. And then also the tail of our bee from the magic ring is kind of getting in the way. So I'm just going to cut that short real quick. And then I'm gonna move my stitch marker over. All right, so now moving on to round 10. Round 10 and round 11 are going to be very similar to what we just did. We are essentially creating two rows of the main color to go in between our stripes. So round 10 is just 24 single crochet around. And then round 11, we're going to be color changing on the last stitch to prepare us to make the second stripe in round 12. So let's go ahead and do round 10 together, which is just 24 single crochet. One, two, All right, we just finished round 10, and now for round 11, we will be doing 24 single crochet around, but since we're color changing on round 12, leave the last stitch unworked. So, one, two, three. And all right, so the last stitch of round 11 is here. We are going to color change since in round 12, we will be making the second stripe. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a single crochet like usual, but I'm gonna stop right here. And then since I didn't cut the yarn earlier, I am just simply gonna grab the second color, yarn under and pull it through those two loops on my hook to complete the single crochet of that last stitch. And there we go. This is what our bee's looking like so far. Super cute, super cute. This is like the head. So, all right, let's move on to rounds 12 and 13. And if you guys have caught on already to the pattern, we will be doing the same thing that we did for these two rounds here. So for round 12, we will be doing 24 single crochet around. And then for round 13, we will also be doing 24 single crochet around, but color changing on that last stitch. So for round 12, let's do 24 single crochet around. All 
All right, that is the end of round 12. And then for round 13, I'm gonna be doing 24 single crochet, but leave that last stitch unworked since we will have to color change for the last time back to the main color. Twenty three. And then there you go. Here is the last stitch of round 13. I am going to single crochet halfway stop here. I'm going to grab the main color. Go ahead and finish that single crochet move my stitch marker over. And now we are officially going to be done with this second color. There's only two stripes in our B. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that second color and then i am going to go ahead and tie a knot because i want to make sure the color change is secure and doesn't come undone all right and this is what our beat is looking like so far i'm going to pull my working yarn out a bit to make this loop a bit bigger since we will now be stopping here to place the eyes so before we place the eyes i wanted to call to attention when you crochet and do a color change you will end up with this little zigzag just because the nature of crocheting in the spiral rounds so i just wanted to call to attention there will be a part of your b where you will see these zigzags and those zigzags are a result of all of the color changing it's just the nature of crochet and like crocheting in the spiral where you will end up with this zigzag there is a method to do an invisible color change as they say but for beginners i just like to show the regular color changing method if you're interested in the invisible color change there's definitely really good tutorials on youtube but for this tutorial you will have a zigzag don't worry it doesn't mean you did anything wrong it's totally normal but with that being said i always like to identify that zigzag and make sure it is the bottom of my b that way it won't be noticeable when you have your finished bee. It'll be on the bottom. So I am simply going to make sure this is on the bottom, especially when placing our eyes. So go ahead and grab your two 12 millimeter safety eyes. And I like to just put my fingers inside the bee for helping to stabilize it. And I like to place my eyes between round four and round five. So if we look at the face of our bee, we can see the magic ring is right here and that represents round one. So to find round four, we can just count one, two, three, four. And then this would be five. So I like to place my eye between four and five. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it right there and then also make sure the zigzags on the bottom there. And then if we're good with that placement, I am going to simply do the same thing. One, two, three, four, and then this would be five. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my eye right in between there. And then of course you can adjust if necessary, but I just wanna make sure the bottom is there. And yeah, it's looking pretty straight. So once you're happy with the eye placement, go ahead and grab the backings to your eye, the little washer, and secure your eyes. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Super cute, super cute. And then as an optional step, if you wanna add some blush under your eye, go ahead and grab some scrap pink yarn and we will go ahead and sew the blush on together. Okay, so I just grabbed some scrap pink yarn. Go ahead and grab your sewing needle and then th let's thread it through. And then what I like to do is, again, I like to put my hand inside to stabilize and then, okay, I wanna go ahead and go right under the eye of my bee. And I usually like to do it like two stitches wide. And I'll go ahead and pull the yarn through. And then I will go in where we originally just put that yarn to create the first line of blush. And then what I like to do personally, I like to do a double stranded blush. So I'll just repeat that same thing. All right, and there we go. Here's the first blush, and then you can just pull it tight. And then I wanna go ahead and join the two strands so I can tie it in a knot. So I'm just going back 
to that original strand over there and I'm pulling it through the same hole as the second strand and then we can just go ahead and tie a knot and then cut the ends short and then go ahead and take like another yarn needle I like to use these big plastic ones and then go ahead and just poke the end of that blush tail into your bee and then sometimes I just like to adjust all right so there is the first side of the blush and I will just repeat this on the other side of our bee All right, I just got done with the blush, so now let's grab some stuffing and start stuffing our bee. Don't overstuff it because we'll still be working at the end and you don't want the stuffing to get in the way, but go ahead and stuff the bottom of the bee as generously as you'd like, really packing it down there to shape the head. It is looking super cute, you guys, but okay, I think I'm gonna stop there with the stuffing. But okay, let's continue on with the pattern. We are going to be working on round 14 and round 15. For these two rounds, we will simply just be doing 24 single crochet around. So I will meet you back here at the end of round 15. We're done color changing, so you can fully complete both of the rounds. All right, I just finished round 15. And as you can see, our B is almost done. Our body is looking really good so far. For round 16, we are going to start decreasing and closing up our B. So we are going to be doing two single crochet, one, two, followed by a decrease. And I like to do the invisible decrease method. So that's simply just going into the front loops of the stitches that you'd like to decrease and do that decrease. And that will help hide that decrease and won't make it as noticeable on the finished plushie. But feel free to do just a regular decrease if you prefer. But we will be repeating that sequence of two single crochet decrease a total of six times. All right, and then this is the last decrease. And there you go. This is what the end of round 16 looks like. As you can see, our body is now getting smaller at the bottom. And let's stop here and stuff a little bit more of our bee. Okay, so for round 17, we're going to be doing one single crochet followed by a decrease. And we will repeat this six times. All right, and this is my last decrease. And we're almost done. As you can see, the hole is now pretty small. Let's finish stuffing the bee. There's only one more round left, so go ahead and stuff as much as you'd like to really get your bee looking the way you like. And sometimes with these plushies, you have to kind of shape it after you stuff it, so go ahead and just Make sure it's looking like the shape you want, but it's going to be pretty cylindrical. All right, I think I'm good. And then for round 18, which is the last round of this pattern, we are simply just going to be doing six decreases. Five, and it does get a little tight, so just be careful and go slow five, six, and then go ahead and take your stitch marker off. And I am going to leave a long tail since we will be closing up that hole and go ahead and just slide the hook down to bring that yarn through and fasten off. So if you want to, you can add any last minute stuffing into here, but otherwise we are going to grab our sewing needle thread the yarn tail through. And then as you can see, we have the six remaining stitches and we can just go ahead and take our needle and thread it through the front loops of those last six stitches. Six. 
fix. And when you're done, you can go ahead and take the needle off and we are going to pull gently on that tail to sew and close up the hole. And then go ahead and thread the needle again. And with this existing tail, we are simply just going to weave it into the body to make sure it is not going to come out and make sure everything is secure. And once you feel good about it, go ahead and cut the tail. And then I just like to poke it through with my other yarn needle. And there you go. This is what the bottom end of our B will look like. And this is what the front will look like. And the side, it is super cute, you guys. And then just feel free to squish it to really get it the shape you want. But now we are so close to being done. We just need to make the two wings. So for the wings, go ahead and grab your wing color. I am using Baby Snuggle in color 01, and I am just going with the typical white color for the wing. So we will be making two wings, and the pattern will be the same for both of them. So for round one of the wing, we will just be doing a magic ring and putting six single crochet into the magic ring. Three, four, five, six. Then go ahead and put your stitch marker on the last stitch and close up your magic ring. Whoop. So this is the end of round one. For round two, we will be doing six increases. So for every stitch, we will be putting an increase into that stitch. All right, and then for the last round of the wing, for round three, we will be doing a single crochet followed by an increase, and we will repeat this six times. All right, and that is the end of round three, and we are done making the first wing. It's super quick. Now go ahead and leave a pretty long tail for sewing, and go ahead and pull the yarn through to fasten off. And now you probably noticed that we have the tail from our magic ring still here. So instead of cutting this off, I like to go ahead and thread my needle, and I like to just weave this tail up to where we just finished that last stitch. So I'm gonna weave it in and out to get it to the end of where we just left off. So now you have essentially have two pieces of yarn coming out of this wing, and this is what we will use to sew it onto our B. So go ahead and make one more wing. I will be doing mine off camera, and then we will meet up to go ahead and sew everything together. All right, I just got done my second wing, so this is what you should have as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab our B body. So we are now ready to sew the wings on. So go ahead and grab one wing, and you can choose whatever tail you want to begin sewing the wing on. I usually like to choose the longer tail if there is one and just go ahead and thread it through your needle. Now in terms of placement, I like to put my wings right here in between the two stripes where we have that stripe of the main body color. So then I like to identify the magic ring because that is the dead center of the bee. And then using my finger, I just like to follow that magic ring all the way up to right where I want to place my wings between the two stripes and you can go ahead and like take whatever you have if you have another needle if you have like a uh, extra crochet hook something to really just show you where you want to put your wings so i went ahead and marked it right here and now i'm gonna go take my wing and i am going to place it right by that spot i chose and i do like to leave a little space between the wings but i know some people prefer to have the wings touching like this per se, so if you want them touching, you can really get it close to where you marked, but I'm going to leave some room between my wings. So I am going to put it not exactly right up with this needle, but pretty close. And then all you wanna do is with your yarn threaded through the needle, you wanna go ahead, 
take a little bit of the needle under the body and then put it through the wing and we will begin sewing that wing onto the body to secure it and I'm just going to repeat that several times picking up both the body and the wing with my needle and sewing the wing on there we go and when you feel like the wing is secure I'm going to go ahead and thread the needle through and pop it out to the side and then we are done with this tail and then I'm going to go ahead and repeat thread this tail through my yarn needle and I'm just going to continue sewing the wing on for extra security and then I'm just going to go ahead and find where I put that first tail and align the second tail with it and then go ahead and just tie the two tails together so we know they are secure go ahead and cut the yarn and then using that needle you can go ahead and poke the remaining bits of that tail through to hide it in your bee body and there we go here is the first wing and then i'm gonna put my needle back so i can know where to sew want to make sure it's still aligned well and it is so then we're just going to repeat take the second wing and just do the same exact thing that we just did with the first wing and let's so i'm going to take this out now that i know what i'm doing and where i'm placing my wing and just sew the wing onto the body to really secure it once you feel comfortable, go ahead and put that tail through a random part of the body and then just repeat with the other tail of the wing. Make sure it's really secure. And then when you feel good, meet those tails back up and go ahead and tie a knot and cut it short. Poke it through, and then I just like to put the wings up so they're up like that. And there you go. Your bee is complete. Super, super cute. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I love this bee pattern so much. As you can see, it works up super quick and bees are so popular in markets and the crochet community in general. Like they are always my go-to item to make if I'm prepping for a market or just selling things online. Everybody loves the crochet bees. So I hope this tutorial was easy for you to follow. If you're a beginner, I hope it made sense and this helps inspire you and launch you into the world of amigurumi. And I used chenille yarn for this bee and it turned out this size but if you want to use acrylic or like a thinner yarn your bee will turn out even smaller I'll put a picture here of how this bee looks in acrylic yarn that is the yarn I originally used when creating this pattern and I love the size of the acrylic bee like it is so tiny and cute but I also love the chenille look and how adorable it looks especially in this like purple color like i have never made a purple bee but i love how it turned out there's so many different color combinations that you can do so i hope you guys really have fun with it but all right i think that wraps up today's tutorial thank you so much for watching tag me on instagram if you use this tutorial i'd love to see your finished bees and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day i'll catch you in my next one bye